Disclaimer. The insights and opinions shared on this show are for educational and entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, we recommend consulting with a qualified professional to better understand your unique financial situation. Welcome to the Investor's Playbook Show, where our mission is clear, empowerment through financial education. We firmly believe that financial freedom isn't a privilege. It's a right that's available to everybody. Each week, we dive deep into the world of finances, breaking down complex topics, and making them accessible and actionable for everyone. As we grow this community, we invite you to join us on this journey. Why tune in? Because together, we're not just learning about wealth. We're building a movement, reshaping futures, and proving that with the right knowledge, financial success is within everyone's reach. It's time to get off the sidelines. Let's go. Yo, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Investor's Playbook. As always, you got your co-hosts Deshaun and Cornell. Cornell, how you feeling today, bro? I'm feeling good, man. Got through another week of uh, being busy where, you know, the new job and also the uh, the program, the school program. How about you, man? Man, I'm feeling great as well, bro. A lot of milestones have been crossed on my job as well. Um, okay. Definitely seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, really getting to the end of the tunnel, walking out of the tunnel. So uh, it's a good feeling to have a lot of these uh, milestones behind me now. And I've been to I've been meaning to ask you, bro. How has the job been going? Like it's been a month. How you feeling about you know the new uh, role and stuff? I feel good, man. Cause it's like uh, district leaders are really leaning on me, and there's a lot of a lot of people are depending on me. So it's like every the work that I do really matters in the district. So it's just I don't know. It's a change of pace. Like for, <laughs> from from being a teacher to where your classroom depends on you to being a district leader where two complete schools depend yeah. on you is a, yeah, it's a big change, man. Big responsibility, man. I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine, but I think that that is a good segue into this episode's topic, right? But first and foremost, as always, if you like our content, if you rocking with us, man, hit that subscribe button, rate us five stars, um, leave some comments, tell us what you like, what you don't like, and join the Facebook group. We the Facebook. Continuing, yeah, we're continuing to grow the Facebook group at a rapid pace. Um, people, are, again, are investing uh, in their first individual brokerage account. That, I think, is still super exciting. Um, and, yeah, just join the conversation, man. We're trying to help people get off the sidelines. Um, really just trying to have people take control of their finances. So. If you're interested, join the Facebook group. And as always, you can catch us on YouTube every single week. But I say segue because today's episode, we're going to kind of look back on history, right? You mentioned that you had this job. You mentioned that a lot of people depend on you, your responsibilities. Now, let's take it back like, I ain't trying to date us, but let's take it back like 15 years, bro. 2008, 2009, we graduated high school. We both decided to go to college. We both decided to get our degrees. We both decided to get our master's. You continued on, got your specialist. Now you're getting your doctorate. What do you think you would have told yourself if you, if you have the knowledge you have now, which is kind of hard to think because you got the knowledge you got now because you went to school, but let's just, you know, let's not even think too deep about it. You have the knowledge you have now. Would you tell your previous high school self, high school Cornell, hey man, you got to make sure that you go to school. You got to make sure that you go to college. You got to make sure you get these degrees. Um, or what would be your advice? I guess it's not even, a, I'll let you choose. What would be your advice to your younger self in regards to higher education, bro? Man, I feel like, I feel like this is a hard um, conversation because you know, there were many things that I loved about school, just, you know, the people I met, the memories that we made and everything. Um, but when it comes to if it was on a strictly finance business type of conversation, I don't think I would have went to school mm -hmm. after after high school. I probably would have picked up a trade um, and just immediately started working. And probably funding uh, my investments from the from the beginning, 
I feel like I would have been better out. I would have made better out um, instead of utilizing the five and a half years that I did in undergrad and not work. Well, I worked, but not a serious job and I wasn't investing. All of those years, I would have been stacking, investing, and the compound interest would um, definitely be in my favor today. What about you? Uh, man, I would absolutely tell myself to go to school, bro. That, like, college, grad school, I I hear the financial piece and how maybe it could have changed. What I would have went back and told myself is to start investing in college. Don't, because don't get me wrong, like, we were in the band. The way we received our band scholarship was a little different than other people. Like, we were getting paid. You feel me? Like we were receiving regular money um, every two weeks. And had I known what to do with it as far as investing, I feel like getting that experience in school helped me find more of who I am. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you're in high school, you're still a bit young. As you grow and into your late teens, into your 20s, you start to kind of learn a bit more about yourself. I, I wouldn't have changed that experience at all. Um, as far as like choosing to go to school, I wouldn't have changed that. What I would have done or what I wish I had done, of course, everyone says this is putting some of the money from the refund checks, putting some of the money from like the checks from school, putting that into like some type of investment account because college was an amazing experience, bro. And not just on a hanging out, meeting people, but also educational, right? Like, I I don't think that I could be the type of engineer I am now if I didn't go to school. I don't think so, right? I, I know that a lot of times people say if you get enough experience, you can work as an engineer. Um, but it's tough to land a job without having that educational background. Now, in some instances, no, that's not the case. But for me and what my passion is, which is STEM, I think... School was kind of one of those things that had to happen. Um, so yeah, bro. Nah, I would, I would absolutely still go back to school. I just, w I would have told myself to be more financially conscious of, you know, yeah. what you're doing with your money. You know what I mean? And I, and I feel that uh, I was just speaking on the financial uh, side. But if it were to go into like my development and things of that nature, like as a man. Uh, me going to school gave me that independence. Uh, it, I paid my first bills when I was in college. I uh, rented my first my first home in college. Uh, I met a lot of people. I was out on my own basically. Nah, for sure. It was it wasn't like I was just going home to my mother every day. Like at this point, I'm an adult. I'm treating myself as an adult. I'm, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I learned responsibility. Yeah. I feel I, we, we both had jobs. I didn't have a, a great job. So, you know, I had to learn how to manage my money to an extent. Right. No, nah, that's true. So you, you learned those early, those early, those, those adult skills early, paying bills, paying rent, making sure you get up and go to work. You know what I mean? Time management, all that. Um, but even in the, the reality of taking out loans or the amount of loans that I took out, the the money that I feel like it paid off is what I'm saying. Like the amount of money that I took out for school isn't. I know it's not just money; it's also time. But the amount of money that I took out, like financial aid that I took out to go to school and receive these degrees, the job that I have now, I think paid that off over. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like well over. Yeah, definitely the uh, the income that I receive now is um the amount of funds that i received from going to school has has uh paid off with the job that i have now is what i'm trying I, to say i guess yeah. i i guess i think of it as not only the funds that it took to go to school but also the funds that could have been saved up from a job during the time that we were in school mm -hmm. so i think of that also um yeah because if if right out of high school being 17 um, and you 16, <laughs> like us going right into a job and starting to invest from there, 
Like right now, I make more money in the stock market than I do my job. So it's it's like, what would it have been if I started at 18? I started the stock market at 23. That, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Well, seven. I would have started at 17. Well, I, I can't open a brokerage. But yeah, if I had started at 18, I would have yeah. been five years of, ahead. What mm. would my income from stocks be then? You get what I'm saying? True. That's true. Yeah. So I'm I'm just I'm just thinking of it on that level. So yeah. it, not just how much I took for student loans. Yeah. Um, like I feel like if it was just student loans, okay, worth it. But it's also the time lost from being in there. Yeah. No, nah, that's real. That's real. And I also think that the fact that um I enjoy that college is an environment where they kind of not really force you to, but you have to mingle with people. You have to get to know people, right? That's it's like a community type environment. Um, and one of the things that I think a lot of college, well, maybe not so much now, but when we were going to college was that financial education piece, right? Like when we were in school, it was uh, different things were important. You know, because I mean, we're 18, we're 19 years old. We're not really thinking about in our 30s, we're going to be like, we're just trying to get through college at that point. Um, but I think that to your point, if you were 18 and started a job and just started investing, even if it was like a minuscule amount, right? If, if we were in college working a job that was paying us, because what was minimum wage in Georgia, like 725 or something? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, we were getting paid seven twenty five an hour, bro. That's yep. crazy. Um, taking home paychecks that were like six, seven hundred dollars, like nothing. But even just investing at that age with that little bit amount of money would have been cool. Because what what type of job would you have tried to get if you were, you know, straight out of high school? Yeah. What There's trade? A there's a lot of jobs. Like first, first off, I could have went to a trade school. You see what I'm saying? And and got That's some type of money though. What's up? Isn't that more money? You got to pay for the trade school before you get the job. But they're very. It's it's nothing compared to the amount of what a university is. Because like staying staying off campus, I want to say we were paying around maybe seven thousand. Uh, but you were like here. For the for tuition, you mean? Yeah, for at Savannah State. And the thing is, yeah. I, I stayed on campus for a while, so I was paying 12000 a year. Yeah. When a trade school is nothing compared to that. And then you can be a cop, and you see what I'm saying? Like, they, they make 40000 coming out. And then, like, there's no telling where the career... There, all right, so, and this is what this is what killed me. So, you remember when I used to work at Mercedes-Benz Stadium? Yeah. So, I asked the general manager, I said, hey, what college do you go to? He told me he does not, he never went to college. This man made 250,000. Yeah, how old is he though? I, I don't know how, he's not old. Uh, okay. <laughs> he did <laughs> on the job training. Oh. Straight oh, out I of see. high school. Yeah. Yeah, no, I got you. I just know that people older than us, you didn't necessarily need a degree. Cause I had managers at Northrop who did not go to college, right? But I think that as time progressed, those type of roles demanded you to have a kind. And I don't know about a general manager. Maybe it's always like that and will always be like that to where as long as you have on-the-job training, you can become a GM. But I think in other realms, it's like even if you do, even if someone didn't go to college previously and is in this role, you are granted that because they've changed the qualifications for this role. They are they're grandfathered in. They didn't have to go to school. Cool. But you, us, our generation now has to go to school to get this role. And it might not be the not same. for everything. Yeah. No, I can see that for certain roles, but yeah. I don't think that's the case for everything. Right. Yeah. Nah, man. I think in, in some cases, you know, and everyone knows this, college is not a necessity. It's not required to make a ton of money. Um it just depends on the the job field you want to go in. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I personally would not want to be a GM for the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, but someone else might really. Like, that's not my passion. My passion is technology. You feel me? For, for sure. Uh, yeah. 
Um, but there are tons of trades, like you said, that you don't need to go to a four year college for and still make so well over a hundred, two hundred thousand uh, dollars. But yeah, I mean, I think even financially, because of where I am now, I still see that me going to college was a good financial decision. Like the investment I made in college paid off with what I'm able to do now. You know what I mean? And then just building from that and not just stopping there, right? Like choosing to go to more college and going to get my master's degree is another investment that has paid off. Because as you know, when I got my bachelor's, I was still chilling, right? I wasn't, I was at working at Whole Foods. You yeah. know what I mean? With a whole electrical engineering degree, not knowing what to do. So I think for me, me getting my degree is what um, set up the trajectory for me to be where I am now. Getting my second degree, but I wouldn't have been able to get my second degree if I didn't get my first. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, I can see that. And, um, <laughs> you know, same same with me. Like, I got the bachelor's. I could have stopped there. Yeah. But, um, you know, I got into education and I needed to get my master's to keep my job and everything. So I got that. And then it was like the next degree was only a year and a half. Might as well get that. And then now I don't know why I'm back. <laughs> I was about to be like, what is he going to say about this? Because this, this is a whole nother. But you're going to be what, 36? 36. Yeesh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, like where I am now, I think it's cool. Uh, I see purpose in it. I love what I do. I love um, that I'm able to help, you know, students with special needs. I love that I'm able to help uh, special education teachers with professional development and stuff like that. Right. Uh, what I say is what I want to do for the rest of my life. No, it's not. Right. But because um, I know my goal, my ultimate goal is just financial freedom. Yeah. And I didn't way to that is the quickest way to that so it doesn't really matter what i am before that you see what i'm saying as long as it gets me to that and mm -hmm. i love teaching financial literacy do i need a degree for that no i just need results uh and i can i feel like we can show results pretty easily yeah. and we, it, we we can show our expertise just by the way we talk um people can clearly see it so that, yeah. that that's that's my thing. Your passion is in tech. It's something that you that you needed it for. As mm -hmm. far as my my passion, it's in education, but not public school education. I feel even, that. even though I'm in the um but but do I think that the skills that I acquire from public education will help me with this? Yeah, I, I feel like it will. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. I I was, I was just thinking like, if, if you were not if, but when, when you receive or when you achieve financial freedom, what would be your passion? Like once you've accomplished that, would it just be maintaining it? Would that be the goal or would it like, would your passion change you think, or what would be the next step after you have the ability to do whatever you want? What do you think you would do next? Uh, to give back like to teach people how i like what i did to get here and just mm -hmm. educate the youth before they get into college run up these credit cards uh mess up their credit uh buy these expensive cars because they're trying to flex so i my my goal would be to catch them before they make all those mistakes mm, no nah, that's that's dope man that's dope for real because basically explaining to them not just how you got to where you are but also the mistakes you made and for them to not make those same mistakes being a bridge builder bro like hey look don't go that way go this way because i already went that way and that is that'll mess you up if you do that so instead do this nah that's i like that yeah and you know some some of those mistakes i feel like we don't always have to make mistakes we can watch other people make them no for you sure because you know yeah. i <laughs> like because we didn't get that expensive car like coming straight out of high school. I mean, well, coming straight out of high school or coming out of college. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So there were a lot of things that we did right, mm -hmm. but we could see other people doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, that's real, man. But yeah. yeah, no time machine exists. So 
all we can do is learn and move forward from the decisions that we made for sure. You know, but see, I'll oh, go ahead and keep running it up like we've been doing. Absolutely, regardless. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But though a time machine does not exist, we do have the ability to change the lives of the people who were, who are at the age that we were fifteen years ago. You know what I mean? So. Um, that's one of the reasons why I really love what we do here. Like even when we are at places like Invest Fest or at a book fair and kids walk up to us, they don't got to be young kids. They could be like teenagers. Tell me about investing. Gladly, young sir, young ma'am, because this can change your life if you start doing it right now. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. And all so, you need really is the book. The book lays down the guidelines, to be honest. That's it. All six steps. So, you know. Yeah. Because uh, I know a lot of people come in, uh, like we were just talking about, come out of high school, not really knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. Really, that book will put you on the right path. And it's such a actionable, easy read, man. But it is. Yeah. yeah. But even yeah. though it's advisor, they got to do the steps, right? Like they got to they gotta actually proceed with the with the steps in the book. And they're really easy steps. That's the crazy part. So. And, and and that's why I feel like it'd be so helpful because you know when you get those books and you're reading it, you're like, I don't know what this means. Why are they talking like this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like trying to make it seem like it's harder than what it really is. I feel like we put it in terms that allow the person, okay, this is all I got to do. There has to be more. Like, because I get that a lot. Is because from people that think that they don't know how to uh, invest, and then when I tell them this is this is all it is, they're like, "Is this is this it?" <laughs> pretty, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. So good stuff. So. Sometimes people make it complicated, but it's not that complicated at all. It's actually not complicated at all. At all. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> having discipline and consistency. If you got that. And when you set up automation, you don't even need discipline. You yeah. it just it just goes. You don't even you don't even need to do anything. You don't even have to think about it. You don't even, you don't need any discipline. You don't need any inkling to say, "Oh, I need to make sure that I do." Nah, it'll do it for you. Just you're right. Just press just, play. Just live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just live. <laughs> That's it, man. But yeah, what do y'all think? For those uh, that did decide to go to college. What was your take on it? How do you feel about your education? Do you think that it has paid off? Has it paid off? Um, and then higher education too, like has that paid off? Uh, and also we wanna hear from people who decided that they wanted to go straight into the workforce, right? Like, would you have went to school instead? Would you have done it differently? Um, wanted to hear from everybody. So y'all leave comments, let us know what you all think. Um, we got anything else for him, Cornell? No, he wrapped it up. Oh, say less. Hey, man, as always, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Thank you for always tuning in and listening. We will catch you all next week. Peace out. Peace.